We've created hundreds of videos on the various aspects of becoming a doctor, including detailed how-to guides on each specific component of the medical school application process. This time, we're attempting to explain the entire process of becoming a doctor in 14 minutes. Dr. Jubal, MedSchoolInsiders.com Becoming a doctor is a complex and difficult process. There are so many different pieces, training steps, and years of hard work to get you to that shiny medical license at the end of the rainbow. First, let's break down the three phases of becoming a doctor. The first step is acquiring a college degree along with the necessary prerequisites for medical school. This typically includes biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, English, and math. Certain schools may require or recommend other courses, such as biochemistry, genetics, physiology or anatomy, behavioral science, humanities, or computer science. Your bachelor's degree can be in anything from microbiology to physics to mathematics to film history. As long as you complete the necessary prerequisites to apply to medical school, your specific degree doesn't matter. But since there's so much overlap in prerequisite courses, nearly 60% of students who apply to medical school choose to major in biological sciences. Generally speaking, your college degree will last four years. During that time, traditionally at the end of your third year, also known as junior year, you'll begin applying to medical school. This is a lengthy and tedious process, which we'll cover in more detail later in this video. This is also when you'll take the Medical College Admissions Test, better known as the MCAT. More on that later in this video too. After graduating from college and gaining an acceptance to medical school, you'll move on to the four years of medical school training. Medical school is broken into two parts, your preclinical years and clinical years. The first two years, known as your preclinical years, you'll spend primarily in the classroom building your medical knowledge. Years three and four are known as your clinical years. During this time, you'll rotate through various clerkships, including family medicine, pediatrics, internal medicine, neurology, general surgery, and psychiatry. By third year, you'll need to begin making decisions about what medical specialty you want to pursue so that you're prepared to apply to residency. Our So You Want to Be playlist breaks down the pros and cons of every medical specialty to help you choose the best career path for you. Link in the description. During medical school, you'll need to complete the first two parts of the three-part United States Medical Licensure Exam, also known as USMLE. USMLE Step 1 and USMLE Step 2 CK are both mammoth exams that require a great deal of studying, even though Step 1 is now pass-fail. While this does make things easier, it also puts even greater importance on step two, the results of which factor greatly in your competitiveness for residency. In the fall of your fourth year of medical school, you'll apply to residency and go through yet another lengthy application process. The final phase is residency. While you'll technically be a doctor after graduating from medical school, to be a fully trained board certified physician, you'll need to complete residency and pass your specialty specific boards. Along that route, during your first year of residency, also known as your intern year, you'll take USMLE Step 3, and after finishing intern year and passing Step 3, you'll be able to get your medical license, meaning you can now legally prescribe medications. If you wanted to work in urgent care or pursue another less specialized or less traditional route, you could just get your medical license after one year of residency and be done, but the overwhelming majority of medical school graduates complete residency and get board certified. The length of residency is completely dependent on the specialty you choose. Training can vary from three years, such as with family medicine and pediatrics, up to seven years for neurosurgery. Depending on the specialty you're interested in, you may also need to complete a fellowship after residency. These can last anywhere from one to three years. For example, if you want to be a gastroenterologist, you'll first need to complete an internal medicine residency followed by a gastroenterology fellowship. Now that we've covered the basics, let's swing back to better understand the complete medical school application process as it's one of the most tedious and difficult steps to becoming a doctor. The medical school application process consists of three major steps. The primary application, the secondary application, and interviews. The primary application is further broken down into your GPA, MCAT score, personal statement, letters of recommendation, and a work and activity section. 
The primary application is submitted through AMCAS, or the American Medical College Application Service, which submits your primary application to the medical schools you select. However, there are two exceptions. If you are applying to osteopathic programs in the hope of becoming a doctor of osteopathy, or a DO, you'll use AA Comas, or the American Association of Colleges of Osteopathic Medicine Application Service. If you're applying to medical schools in Texas, the vast majority of these schools also use their own application service called TMDSIS, or the Texas Medical and Dental Schools Application Service. While nearly identical processes, there are subtle differences. Learn more from our guide linked in the description. The AMCAS, AA Comas, and TMD SAS applications usually open in the first week of May for the following year's medical school class. You'll have about a month to prepare the application, as submissions don't open until the end of May or early June. For example, if you want to begin medical school in the fall of 2026, you'll submit your application in the spring of 2025. While you can technically submit an application for medical school much later, applying early is one of the most important tips for gaining acceptance. First, your GPA, or grade point average, is a hard metric admissions committees use to gauge your level of preparedness for medical school. If you struggled to achieve strong grades throughout college, adcoms will doubt your ability to handle the rigors of medical school. Each school has their own cutoffs and expectations. The best way to determine if your score is good enough is by using MSAR, the Medical School Admission Requirements, an online database that provides average GPA and MCAT scores for all matriculants across the US. Next, we have the MCAT, or the Medical College Admission Test, which is a grueling 7.5 hour test that all medical school applicants must take. It's broken down into four distinct sections, covering everything from chemistry to physics, to psychology, to biology, to critical thinking. It's considered one of, if not the most challenging aspects of applying to medical school. While it's possible to take the MCAT more than once, preparing for it takes an incredible amount of time and effort. Retaking the MCAT means you have less time available for all the other crucial aspects of your application. One of the most important decisions you'll make about MCAT prep is what study resources to use. Success on the MCAT is not based on your intelligence, but rather on the quality of your resources and study techniques. The all-new Med School Insiders MCAT course is your one-stop shop for everything you need to ace the MCAT. The course was created by a team of doctors who each scored in the 100th percentile, including yours truly. It includes gold standard content, three full-length and two half-length practice tests, end-of-module questions, and one-on-one -on -one guidance. Plus, it now comes with the industry's first-ever honest 510 plus score guarantee. Meaning, if you don't score a 510 or higher, we'll give you your money back. And on top of that, we also offer a 10-day 100% money back guarantee. Learn more at medschoolinsiders.com forward slash MCAT. Students can decide when they want to take the MCAT. It's frequently taken in junior year, but we strategically recommend most, but not all, students take the MCAT during the summer between sophomore and junior year. If, however, you plan on taking a gap year between college and medical school, which is becoming more and more common, it's recommended to take the MCAT during the summer between your junior and senior year. The next component is your personal statement. It's a 5300 character essay response to the question, why do you want to be a doctor? While only a short essay, it holds considerable weight in showing medical schools who you are behind your grades and test scores. Students frequently underestimate the impact their personal statement has on admissions committees. A bad personal statement can tank an otherwise stellar application. See examples of great personal statements in our free personal statement database linked in the description. Your essay must feed into your overall application narrative and provide deeper insights into your past experiences, values, and goals. What and who made you who you are today? It's essential that this essay provides new insights into your journey and is not a rehash of your CV. The next piece of your application is your letters of recommendation, which offer a third-person summary of your unique skills from a qualified professional. Aim to secure four to five strong letters of recommendation. While securing a letter from a physician with a prestigious reputation can be tempting, the more important thing about your letter writers is that they know you deeply and think highly of you. 
a lukewarm letter of recommendation from a big name in medicine will actually hinder your chances of acceptance compared to a warm and authentic letter from someone who is not well known in the industry. The last component of your primary application is the work and activity section. You can select up to 15 pre-med experiences on the AMCAS application, ranging from volunteering, clinical and leadership activities, employment, honors, and more, and discuss how these experiences shape your desire to become a physician. Admissions committees are primarily looking for clinical exposure, research experience, and community involvement. Participating in activities in each of these areas demonstrates that you have the kind of relevant interests and well-rounded experience to fully understand whether or not you really want to pursue a career in medicine. However, it's also important to choose activities you actually enjoy and will be able to commit to long-term, as admissions committees also look for enthusiasm, leadership, and longitudinal commitment. Secondary applications follow the primary application. So long as you meet bare minimum cutoffs, you should receive secondaries from each of the schools you apply to within two to four weeks. This is because secondaries provide schools with more information about you and come with a fee that goes straight to the school. Secondaries vary from school to school, but generally ask targeted essay questions about why you want to attend that school in particular and what you have to offer the school in return. Ideally, you'll complete all secondary applications within two weeks of receiving them. This ensures you stay on pace with other applicants and receive the first round of interview offers. Our free secondary essay database includes the most recent information about the secondary requirements for U.S. medical schools, including prompts from previous and current years, fees, and other requirements like Casper or Preview, which are situational judgment tests required by select medical schools. Database linked below. Finally comes interviews, the final hurdle to jump in your journey to medical school. Interview invites first arrive around August and continue into the spring of the following year. Your personal timeline for preparing for interviews should begin months before receiving an invitation so that you can prepare foundational answers to common questions and hone your interview skills. The best way to improve your interview performance is to put in the reps. To elevate your interview prep experience beyond what's ever been possible before, we designed the Med School Insider's Interview AI course with a hyper-realistic AI model that offers personalized interview questions based on your personal statement and work and activities, in addition to unlimited instant tailored feedback. It's like having unlimited mock interviews at your fingertips throughout your entire interview prep. Try it absolutely free with no credit card required to see it in action for yourself. And for a limited time, access 20% off using code DOCTORINTERVIEW. For a more detailed explanation of each of these application components, check out our How to Apply to Medical School playlist. Once in medical school, you'll have a short break from applications before another grueling application process begins. Residency application season begins in the fall of your fourth year. The components are analogous to the medical school application, consisting of your grades, USMLE Step 2 score, personal statement, letters of recommendation, an experiences section, and interview season. Residency applications are submitted through the Electronic Residency Application Service, or ERAS, but depending on the specialties you're applying to, you may use SF Match or Residency CAS. While many of the components are similar for residency applications, you'll need to demonstrate maturity, growth, and dedication to medicine and the specific specialty you're applying to. Another difference is that all students rank the programs they interview at on a rank order list. Unlike applying to medical school, where you can collect multiple acceptances and make a decision at the end, the match algorithm assigns you to a program. It takes into account your program preferences, as well as each program's preferences for candidates and assigns candidates to programs. Match week occurs during the third week of March the following year after your application. This is when all students find out if they matched and to which program. We covered the complete match week process as well as how the match algorithm works in other videos linked in the description. What aspect of becoming a doctor do you want to learn more about? Let us know in the comments, and if we haven't covered the topic already, we'll dig deeper in a future video.